Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle Funden. I'm an author and speaker. I'm gonna show you guys three books. This is my twin flame vlog, by the way. I believe it's episode 41. And the title of this is Why We Allow Bad Behavior from Our Twin Flame. All right, I'm gonna show you the three books that are going to be represented in this vlog. Twin Flame Romance, The Journey to Unconditional Love. Twin Flame Union, The Seven Keys to a Healthy Twin Flame Journey. And my latest book, The Empowered Divine Feminine, Becoming an Unstoppable Woman in the 21st Century and Beyond. Now, let me just tell you, I'm gonna do a little plug for my channel here, you guys. Some of you might be under the perception, which is actually a misperception, that because I have 22,900 subscribers on this channel that I get a lot in YouTube monetization money. And the real truth is that I don't. I think I looked for the past few days on YouTube and I think I got from AdSense revenue about $3.50. Now you times that times 30 days out of the month. <laughs> We're talking roughly a hundred bucks, right? A hundred bucks, you can't live on a hundred bucks. So really, if you would like to support my work, if you would like to support the channel, please pick up a copy or two or three of my published books, especially in paperback or hardcover. Those help tremendously. I just wanted to plug that because I know a lot of you who are regular viewers of YouTube are under the impression that YouTubers do make a lot of money on YouTube. And I think you have to have well over like a million views a month in order to have that happen, which I certainly don't. I'm here with my Grogu. Isn't that cute? That's my new Grogu Tumblr. With Ticino, Caramel Nut, Dandelion Tea, Dandelion Caramel Nut Tea. I've got Gudetama. It's his anniversary. And I've got my Padawan Grogu here. As you can tell, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. And I just like Sanrio. <laughs> I like Sanrio, especially Gudetama. I don't know why he spoke to me, but he definitely did speak to me. So I'm gonna take a sip of my tea here. Mm, extremely hot, which I like. It's actually gonna help my voice. I don't know, with this weather going up and down, it definitely is spring here in Southern California. So it's hot and it's cold, it's hot and it's cold, it's hot and it's cold, it's hot and it's cold. It's rainy and it's dry and it's rainy and it's dry. It can't make up a decision of how the weather is going to act here, which I guess is pretty typical for April, no matter where you are in the country, especially if you're in North America, of course. This topic came to me for this vlog. And you know, honestly, I, I don't know what I'm going to do from week to week. I'm really super duper focused on my new channel, Transcendent Astrology and Tarot. If you have not yet checked out that channel, please go over there or open up a new tab on your browser subscribe to Transcendent Astrology and Tarot because I am putting out an astrology video once per week. So please do check that out. I've been really focused on my new channel. I have so much saturation of material on this channel, especially surrounding the topic of Twin Flames, that I kind of just wanted to pivot and do other things. As you saw last week, I did a pick a card reading because I did do a lot of tarot on my channel prior. So I'm not really sure at this point what it's going to be, what it's going to become. I think it's just going to depend on my mood from week to week. I'm only going to post one full length video per week on this channel because I can't manage two channels. It's very difficult to manage two channels and that's what I'm currently doing. And so I'm pouring a lot of my effort into the new channel because astrology and tarot and predictive astrology is really what my heart is set on right now. But I love the twin flame topic. I'm on this twin flame journey. For those of you that are new to my channel, thank you for watching this. Thank you for subscribing below. Click on the bell, scroll up to all for all notifications. Thanks for giving the video a thumbs up. I'm a twin flame. 
I've been on this journey since 2018, mid to last quarter, I guess, of 2018. And I am not with my twin flame, for those of you that are new to the channel. I have elected not to be with my twin flame. Not that I really was given much of a choice, but I was offered friendship, kind of, sort of. And um, it was just a lot of, speaking of bad behavior, it was a lot of bad behavior that I really wasn't willing to accept. Now, it wasn't horrendous. Don't get me wrong. I was not going to accept horrendous behavior. But it was just um, self-centered when it really served him to be in contact with me. And it, I didn't want that. That's not what I wanted. And it wasn't good for me. It wasn't good for my heart. It wasn't good for my mental health. And in the past few weeks, I've been coaching twin flames, some of them brand new to the journey. Some of those that I've coached have been on the journey for quite some time. But there's been this recurring theme coming up of twin flames, accepting bad behavior from their twin flame. Now they might not be fully accepting of that bad behavior, but the fact that they're still dealing with their twin flame on any level in the 3D physical realm, and they've seen repetitious patterns of this poor behavior, it leads me to ask the question as to the why. Why are we willing to accept bad behavior from an adult person in our lives. And I know it's a twin flame and I know it's strong. So we are going to delve deeply into this and it's going to be non-linear. I'll just tell you that right now. I haven't really prepared this topic. It's been at the forefront of my mind since I've done several readings with people over the past several weeks. And so I don't really have a topic prepared per se. And that's why this is in vlog form versus in a Twin Flame guidance video form, which if you have not yet checked out my playlist on Twin Flame guidance, then I'm gonna post that right here. You can check out my Twin Flame guidance playlist. Bad behavior from a Twin Flame. I think when we enter the twin flame journey, we have a lot of misconceptions about what we're supposed to do. And the reason is, is because we are experiencing unconditional love for this other person. And it may even be the first time we are experiencing this intensity of love for another person who isn't our relatives, if you will. And so we have this intensity, this feeling of unconditional love, this, this feeling of unconditional acceptance, this burning desire to be near your twin flame, the burning desire to be with your twin flame, this obsession, the magnetic attraction, and everything else that goes with it. And because we're experiencing this for perhaps the first time, we just don't know what to do with this. And along the journey, especially during the first, second, or third years of the journey, we fail to realize that our twin flame is human. <laughs> yes, they are a spiritual being having a human experience, but they are human. And we forget that. We forget the fact that they are human. And all sense of logic, reasoning, and boundary setting goes out the door when it comes to interacting with your twin flame, talking with them, texting with them, seeing them in person, listening to their voice. All sense of reasoning and logic and boundary setting just go straight out the door. And it, a lot of it, like I said, is because of that feeling of unconditional love. If you really love somebody unconditionally, yes, you are going to accept certain behaviors and ask for them to change, but you might not see a change right away, but you might go into that relationship and just say, look, I have a lot of love for you. I'm recognizing these types of behaviors. Could you please work on that? Because these aren't behaviors that I'm willing to receive. 
Let me give you some examples of the behaviors that I've heard. There is a behavior that I talk about often and it's called breadcrumbing. <laughs> it's when a twin flame, and my twin flame did this all the time. He really breadcrumbed me. Where they will give you like little bits and pieces of attention or just enough to keep you hooked or to keep you rehooked in the physical 3D connection but then they will take that away. So they'll ghost, they might block you, they might disappear and not be seen or heard from for months at a time. And so that breadcrumbing is what I would consider to be bad behavior. That's one example. Another example is the twin flame that comes in just for intimacy. So they might text or call you from time to time, but when they see you, they just want to get down and dirty, if you will. They're not willing to take you out on a date or they're not willing to go the extra mile to sit on the couch with you and watch a movie or take you out to the movies or take you out to a nice, really beautiful restaurant or plan a really cute date for you but they're gonna come in and come out just for the intimacy. And another bad behavior from a twin flame would be one, for example, who wants to maintain an online relationship, whether it be through social media or whether it be through FaceTime or through just texting, but they don't wanna take the extra step to see you in person. And so all of these, these are just a few examples, by the way, there are many other examples, but all of these examples are examples of poor behavior, bad behavior. And because we as twin flames have unconditional love for our person, we have a tendency to overlook, make excuses for, or accept the bad behavior. Well, they're my twin flame. Well, you know this is a soul connection. Well, you know this is otherworldly. Well, you know my magnetic attraction to them. Well, you know that I need them. All of this. And the problem with accepting bad behavior from your twin flame is that it doesn't allow them to grow. And also, it doesn't allow you to grow. Because really, there's more than one reason why we have a tendency to accept bad behavior from our twin flame. One is the crazy attraction, right? The crazy calling to that person's soul. We equate them with unconditional love. We don't think we can get it from any other source. And so we make excuses for the bad behavior because we're like, well, I love them unconditionally. I love their soul. Their soul is mine, mine is theirs. Like, it doesn't matter, but it really does matter because on the inside, it really bothers you as it should, right? No one should accept bad behavior continually from another person. So we reason ourselves away with unconditional love, unconditional love, unconditional love, and soul contract, soul contract, soul contract. And then we ignore the bad behavior. We push it aside. We make excuses for it. But the second reason, and I think this is the real reason, and it's the one that needs some self-exploration, and that is because you have inherent flaws in you. Yes, I did just say that. You have inherent flaws in you that you need to take a look at. For example, the fear of abandonment, the fear of being lonely, the fear that if you somehow push away your twin flame and say, I'm not gonna accept this bad behavior, that they will go away forever and ever and ever and never, ever, ever come back to you. That you have serious codependency issues, right? That you have poor self-esteem, poor self-worth, poor boundaries. And so when I say you have the inherent flaws is that if you were repaired in your inherent flaws, and look, this book right here, this book right here helps you to dig deep into those inherent flaws. Dig deep. Woo, I'm, I just opened up to this page. I said right here, relinquish the need for validation. Oh my God, 
I have a quote here. You give up your inner power. This is from this book, The Empowered Divine Feminine. You give up your inner power by needing validation. You give up your inner power by needing validation. Let's flip to another page. I, again, I don't even know. I'm just like, don't settle for less. <laughs> don't settle for less. Why are we settling for less? That's from this book, The Empowered Divine Feminine, How to Heal Those Inner Flaws. And why are we settling for less, right? Why are we settling for less than we need in our lives from a romantic partner just because they're a twin flame? That is not an excuse. That's not a reason. You can love and accept that person for the human that they are. And you should, right? You should accept and love that person for who they are but you don't have to accept the behavior coming from them. You can create some physical distance between you and them because the behavior isn't good, right? If repeatedly they've said, hey, twin flame, I'm gonna come over, I'm gonna come over, I'm gonna come over, and they've made a date with you or they've made a meeting with you or they've said, next Thursday, eight o'clock, we're gonna meet at so-and-so place, and then, Thursday at seven o'clock PM, they text you and say, oh, can't make it. And they've done this one, two, three, four times. That's you accepting the bad behavior because if it happens once, it could be a mistake. But if it happens twice, that is beginning to be a pattern. And if you're accepting of that pattern, that bad behavior, then you're the one that is in the wrong for your life, for your integrity, for your self-worth, for your self-esteem. If you are a twin flame who is accepting that your twin flame doesn't wanna meet with you in person and date you and develop a physical friendship with you, but that they're asking you to sext with them, that they're asking you to have virtual sexual intimacy over FaceTime or whatever, whatever platform, you do video chat and you're accepting of that, then you are accepting bad behavior from your twin flame. Really dig deep into yourself and ask yourself, why am I accepting this bad behavior? And if you give the excuse of unconditional love, that is not the reason because unconditional love is not about accepting bad behavior. Unconditional love is a more ethereal concept, right? It's more of a spacey, spiritual concept of loving a person for their soul, loving a person for who they are as a soul, not loving all of their bad, bad, bad behavior that they're going to take actions to hurt you, to harm you when they are trying to degrade away at your self-esteem because you are being unconditionally loving to them and you are being unconditionally giving to them and they keep taking advantage of your niceness, your time, your effort. Even some twin flames, yes, I've heard this, have given their twin flames money, have given them cars, have given them housing. I mean, these people have taken advantage on so many levels, but you're the one that is at fault. Because if you see the pattern, if you see this happening, then it's in your power to set the boundary and stop it. I feel like in this twin flame community, there is a lot of speak of unconditional love, unconditional acceptance. They're your twin flame. You should be with them no matter what, no matter what cost. You should be near them no matter what, no matter what cost. And that's not exactly how human life works, right? We can have spiritual love, sure, and we do. We definitely have spiritual love, but we are not designed to be doormats. We're not designed to roll over and let someone walk all over us, even in the smallest ways, right? Because you might be thinking, well, my twin flame has never really done that. Like, I've never had to give them money, I've never given them a car, I've never given them housing. They've never really asked for anything. Um, material, if you will, but their bad behavior comes disguised as making excuses, not wanting to see you, not wanting to pursue this as a relationship, but they're still texting you and calling you, you know, that's still bad behavior because they're not wanting to develop 
the twin flame relationship, albeit friendship or a romantic partnership, they're not willing to develop that and allow it to grow and flourish and be real. Because like it or not, we are still human beings and we still do need human relationships. And human relationships, more than anything else, includes seeing each other in person and developing a real physical connection in person, whether you decide to be friends or whether you decide to be lovers or whether you decide to be in a permanent, committed partnership together. So just think about this. Think about this for yourself. Think about this for your life. Think about this for your twin flame story. And just think about what have you accepted as bad behavior from your twin flame? And what are you continuing to accept as bad behavior from your twin flame? What are you continuing to accept? Are you putting your life on hold for a twin flame that is making promises, but they're not following through with those promises? I know for many years with my twin flame, there was always this promise of some sort of progression. Like we will see each other. We will talk on the phone. We will do this. We will do that. And it was almost like every time it approached that time to either see each other or talk on the phone or whatever, it was, he always pushed out the date or made excuses. There was always an excuse with my twin flame. Always, 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 always. Excuses, 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 always. And for years, the first few years at least, I did accept those and I gave him a lot of grace. I gave him a lot of grace, more than I should have ever given when it came to his behavior toward me. And finally, there was just a moment that the straw broke the camel's back and I was like, no more, this is not happening. I'm not doing this. You're not being real with me. You're not being honest. You're making excuses. I really had to cut off communication with him because I said, I want a real world physical relationship, whether it's friendship or other, but this is silly. Like, I'm not gonna, you've been telling me the same thing for years. And this is dumb. Like it was just me accepting bad behavior. And then I finally came to a moment where I was like, enough is enough. I can't do this. This is dumb. And the little self-awareness that came from his side was that just lack of awareness of not being able to understand why I was doing what I was doing. But that just shows, it showed me how he had not yet really woken up to the point of taking accountability for his actions. So that was a telltale sign for me and it didn't bother me. At that point, it was like, yeah, I was angry. But at that point, it just didn't bother me because I was like, it's not even as if he were in my life anyway. It's a bunch of empty promises. That's all it is until I just bless him, until he's ready to awaken more and stop resisting doing the work. And then so be it, <laughs> so be it. But at least I am not in the space where I'm accepting the poor behavior anymore. I would hope that for you as well. I hope this was a helpful little dialogue with you. And I know it was a little bit all over the place but I hope it helps you to really think about your interactions with your twin flame and whether or not those interactions are healthy for you. And if you're accepting poor behavior from your twin flame, then to do something about it because you don't need to take that just because they're your twin flame. So I hope this is helpful. I wanna thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for subscribing to my channel below. Click on the bell, scroll up to all for all notifications. Thank you for giving the video a thumbs up. Thank you for sharing this video with others on the Twin Flame journey. Thank you so much for your support of my YouTube channel. Make sure to pick up copies of these three books if you have not read the trilogy, the trilogy of books. I have other books too. Check those out. You can also book a reading with me and the links are all below. And I will see you in the next video.